get to the other categories, but before we dive into that, uh -huh. um, I want to actually get everyone's pers like everyone's first um, take on the Game Awards. Just overall, what you thought of the show, and do you think, like, considering the year that we've kind of been in, mm -hmm. that Jeff did really well? Because I do. I think, yeah. like, yeah. considering the fact that he had to do this all mostly virtually. Right. Um, yeah. I think it was well well executed. Obviously, do you think it was pre-recorded? Yes. Like, I, it, it definitely like, some yeah, of the segments felt were. like some of them were, yeah. Um, I think overall though it was a good show. Like considering the circumstance and the fact that clearly it's not ideal for them to be working and, and creating this type of content the way that they did. I think he did a good job in organizing a pretty solid show that had some pretty great announcements. I, I mean Granted, some of the announcements that may that were made weren't necessarily tailored for me. You know, like I'm not going crazy over something like Perfect Dark or a new Mass Effect, but I know those are big announcements. Whoa, you know, caboose, I, caboose, I acknowledge, caboose. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I just lost it by not. I just, I just said that I acknowledge that those are big announcements. Yeah, yeah, They're just and not I tailor made for me. Great content creator. That's not like, enough. You like Death Stranding. <laughs> you like Death Stranding. The end. Um, okay. So, <laughs> so, but, but like, honestly, I think it was, a, it was a good show well put together. And for me, like the most hype was back for blood. I cannot oh, wait to God. try out that game. I'm literally crossing my fingers that I get into the alpha and I get to play that this week because I am Absolutely. just so, so excited for that. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a good show. It was a good show. And, and even like the fact that he threw some performances, I loved the bit at the end with the orchestra doing the scores oh, so from good, all the yeah. uh, the game of the year nominees and as well um oh my goodness i can't remember his name from from pearl jam who performed the Eddie song Vitter. from the last of us yes yeah who performed the song from the last of us that was incredible i loved that segment um yeah it's good awesome. it's a good show it's a good show i think the only complaint that i have it was it was a little bit too long and too many like off book advertisements yeah it it was just i if i'm if i'm watching the game awards show me show me commercials for like the definitive editions of games and then for what's coming up next i i don't want to see old fortnite ads i don't want to see you know animal crossing ads it, there's just a lot of like weird little filler ads that made me mute the stream and then have to come back later and like oh i missed something you know mm -hmm. but other than that uh i think it was a really it was a really good show a lot of announcements a lot of uh really great things coming there was a lot of uh uh, zombie multiplayer repetition uh, this year. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think overall, uh, Jeff Keighley just knocks it out of the park, I think, year over year, and especially this year where, you know, we're in unprecedented times and all that, I think he still knocked it out of the park. I will say, though, that, again, it was really long. Three hours is a little too much to sit through. I get that yeah. he's creating this platform that's kind of like you know that that halfway mark between e3 seasons i understand that and but it also felt like this was the first year where it was more about the announcements than it was about the awards and yeah. the community where i was like okay there i think there were at least one point or multiple points where they just ran through like rapid fire five five awards and just to get to that next announcement i'm like okay i i, I kind of like that um that fanfare that goes into letting people uh speak in their i guess in this case zoom uh video or whatever and just you know accept the award and kind of celebrate that individual rather than just like you know rapid fire get, go in a rapid clip just to get to the next award or announcement yeah. i think that's that's the only criticism that i yeah, have I, I agree like when they did best fighting game i was like okay we're gonna right? get ed boone up there to talk a little bit about oh. you know the accomplishments and stuff but they were like yeah okay he won best fighting game moving on you know like i feel yeah. like that, that that sort of have a longer show, but but so excel some of the ads instead I, of it. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. The, the the ads pay for the show, it so I get that. Really, it's like yeah. you need the ads. Um, it's but... it's a double edged sword, but I feel like at the end of the day, like there would there wouldn't be an Oscar category where they're like, yeah, so and so won the Oscar. Okay, let's go to the next one. Here's a okay. here's a new movie trailer. You yeah. know what I mean? Like the the night should be i feel first and foremost a night of celebrating yeah. the developers who work on these games and put countless amount of hours into these games um and then second should be 
the game announcements, the advertising. I know that that's maybe not necessarily ideal. I'm living in a bit of a dreamland and asking for that because again, at the end of the day, the show, <laughs> the, I mean, thank you. You like Death Stranding um, because I understand that at the end of the day, the show, it, it needs to like, it needs these advertisers so that they could actually fund it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I don't know. I just, I, I agree with the point that Steve's trying to make there. I think, I think there's yeah. a balancing act between, you know, it being a audience focused announcement, you know, spectacle and then being an industry award ceremony. I think that yeah. there's, there's a balancing mm -hmm. act there that I think Jeff Keighley could still work on, but I think he's almost there. I think it gets better every year. Yeah. I think yeah. It gets better every year. I think like how he uses the orchestra, like that tied mm -hmm. to the balancing act. Like, Absolutely. you know, if it was more of an industry award, we wouldn't have all the commercials. We wouldn't have all the showy things. We wouldn't have Eddie Vedder there performing. Right. But in order to make it an entertainment, um, act and also for people outside of the gaming community to talk about it you need those appearances by like mm -hmm. Tom holland you need a gal gadot you need the mm -hmm. theatrics of an award show for that to happen and for that to happen you need money to get yeah. those people yeah. there yeah. and yeah. money doesn't come in unless there are ads and i think the reason why we're right. seeing lots of old ads is because of the year it's been i i actually okay. think overall the award show was was good um obviously considering what's been happening in the year it was great but mm -hmm. i was a bit disappointed with the lack of uh announcements from games that we were hoping to get when you mm -hmm. look at last year right and yeah. the reveals that were happening we didn't get that this year and i think that's reflective because of the pandemic a lot of studios don't know if they're ready to show or they know they're not ready to show some of the titles they would have otherwise been ready mm -hmm. if they were in studio working and sure. because of that we see old advertisements when they're running those ads right um they don't want to put anything else new no. out the only weird, really weird thing, if there was a point in the show earlier on where he was advertising artists. Yeah. And that that was very out of like, I was like, what is, what's going on here? I'm not watching mm. a music <laughs> awards show. I'm watching the game awards. It's different if he was doing something to tie in Fortnite, like unveiling new right. artists that are going to be showcased in Fortnite throughout 2021. But it was, was just like this new initiative with musical artists like it was really weird there was a lot of uh there was a lot of little like off uh off key awards and like off key uh like segments that i think uh could have replaced a lot of the advertisements but i wanna did you guys watch on twitch or youtube youtube i, I watched it on youtube, YouTube. okay because i watched it on twitch and i got three ad blocks because i missed oh. the dragon age oh commercial and i don't know if you guys play dragon age but uh an ad block came up and yep. then all of a sudden solace's big bald head is on my screen and i'm like <laughs> wait what is going on i'm like hold wow. on and and yeah. and then uh oh the the persona musical performance oh i missed God. i missed a portion of it because i had an ad block on twitch so That's that was that i think might have affected my experience a little bit more adversely sure. than you guys because it's yeah. like i'm seeing ads in the game awards and then i'm seeing ads on twitch but the good thing is on twitch people could like vote and there was like a little bit of like a community yeah. you know thing like that yeah. but it, it to go to what you're saying my thing is i don't understand why how big the game awards are how big jeff keely is how come we haven't seen an exclusive partnership like i know his he did mention within the award ceremony that yeah. it's being uh aired throughout the world in all these right. new countries and it's being accessible to everyone right and and that's great but let's let's be real, okay? This is also a business. Um, mm -hmm. So you would think there would be, you know, a North American exclusivity um, a deal, which I think he maybe had like some sort of part. Well, he had a partnership with Twitch because they were doing um, the interactive. The extension, yeah. mm -hmm. He also yeah. had some streamers um, that were the official Game Award streamers um, mm -hmm. go as well. But I thought, you know, after all these years of Game Awards, we would be seeing more of like, okay, only on YouTube. Yeah, I, oh, I see. I'm gonna. This is gonna be a hot take. I have 
liked Twitch less and less over the course of this year. I would have, pr I would prefer Jeff Keeley. I hate Facebook, right? But I would prefer them to do something with Facebook gaming or YouTube because the there's less music copyrights, less ads, and they have developed better experiences. Um, the it's just Twitch, man. Something about this year has done bad things to them, and they just can't seem to, you know, stop the bleeding. And hearing your guys' experience on YouTube being a little bit better, because I had frame rate drops, my quality would go down randomly, because if you set your Twitch quality to auto, it'll randomly change it. Sure. Um, yeah. And the fact is, is that on Twitch, I can't go back and watch something That's that why may I be an YouTube. ad cut Major. off, or that, yeah. I, that the quality dropped on. Because I, I had to watch the Mass Effect trailer in 480. And I'm like, <laughs> what? Like, why? It's it's one of those things where I think that if they can find a better platform, go for it. It would have been great for them to do a deal with Twitch, but I think that as a business person, they know that Twitch is not the best platform for them right now, and they wanted to keep it broad and open broadcasting wherever they could. I, sure. I don't think he's ever going to do like an exclusive thing, though, just because of the fact that like there's too much money that he could probably pull in streaming it on all platforms rather right. than yeah. an exclusive deal with just one um but anyways like that besides the point like um it was a good show it was a good show i liked it overall uh i hope that next year things will be better and we could do it live again yeah, yeah. uh because i would i would love an opportunity to be there at the game yeah. awards to be in the audience exactly collect your you know, award for content creator of the year exactly <laughs> that's that's the goal so um yeah but uh but i i feel your pain malik and especially with the random ads popping up for twitch um i i mainly just watch on youtube because you know if i if i miss something or if i want to go back to something i can right. um but also like the benefit is that there isn't like an ad popping up in the middle of the stream yeah yeah i want to yeah. i want to give a quick shout out to uh riddick 2 slash fast and furious oh prim evil oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I legitimately thought it was Riddick 2. When I saw Vin Diesel, I was like, yeah, Riddick 2. And then it was Arc 2, which is cool. Was, I'm excited cool. for Arc 2, yeah. but it, that was... Mm. Fast I thought it was Furious 3000 BC. I thought, I thought it was the Horizon <laughs> sequel. I was like, no way did they put Vin oh, Diesel yeah. in that. Oh, yeah. That like, would have no been so way. bad. Oh, my Honestly, God. it was the worst like okay so you have this cute little moment where the trailer opened you see that little alien bug thing yeah. and then you see the little girl and she's interacting with it and you're like Ooh, what's this like it piques your interest mm -hmm. then you see ben diesel and you're like <laughs> no his you head and his body gosh. are different colors i got family it just he is so clean <laughs> for being primal like i don't i i was waiting for like everyone else to appear. Like it was just, it was like, this is a Fast and the Furious crossover with Ark. Like what is, I don't, I think that was, Imagine. this is gonna be interesting to see how Ark actually um, uh, plays this out because I, I, it just bad news, bad, 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 bad news. <laughs> bad, bad. <laughs> bad, bad news. Like this is something that I wouldn't think you would want for a game that had praise, was very niche, but right. had praise there and you, you're, you would hope that they're, you know, going for this resurgent and, you know, the celebrity, this is the risk of when you have that celebrity buy-in. Like I know Vin Diesel, he's a gamer. Like he loves Dungeons and Dragon. Put him in something like that. Do a, do a was there any backlash? Dungeons and Dragons. I didn't see yeah, there any backlash. Everybody on Twitter was. Yeah, I just memeing. saw memes. But there were there were. I feel memes are also the unheard backlash because uh, the memes okay. only. Yeah. Because I feel like. Um, I remember a lot of memes about Death Stranding. Well, those people just don't know. Oh. <laughs> 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 um. No, but there wasn't like outright backlash but i know people were kind of joking on it and yeah. i feel like this is a step in the wrong direction um for mm. the art series because there there's a lot of great mechanics in arc um yeah. i just it, no ben diesel please no. i <laughs> i'm worried that it's going to be this sounds this sounds weird, but I'm worried it's going to be a single player story experience. Yes, and I that's know. not what I want from Arc. Um, I you, you think know, they'll want to go the core thing though. 
Really? I think that they'll. I think that they will focus. I think that they're gonna reskin and update the creative experience. They're gonna make sure. it look new and shiny, and then make the the main feature like like oh, a I story. Yeah. Um, and that's not really what uh, I think Arc is about. I think they might lose some core people. And their most recent update, Genesis, was one of the worst reviewed uh, expansions and additions that they've had to date. It was so mm -hmm. bad. Um, it just wasn't what the fans wanted. I, I think that they need to reevaluate uh, how the fans view Ark as a series and go forward. I don't think that uh, everybody needs to jump on this live action capture mocap. Sure. It, it, not everyone needs it. Hey, you know what? I, as long as they got that animated series, I'm sure they're all going to be happy. Oh, and that's, that's the true. Thing. That I looked was good. More excited it did. about that. Like, yeah. That was yeah. Really, and the cast. Vin Diesel's going to be in that too. Yeah. And that, and I'm excited for that. Like uh, an animated series with Vin Diesel, that's cool. I like that. But don't put him yes. in the game. It, no. it feels gimmicky when you put him in the game. It's like you're trying to force something, you know. I also uh, just uh, talking about stuff that we were excited on seeing. Uh, despite what Kabo said, I was really excited to see that Mass Effect trailer. In terms of oh, just a trailer so closing good. out the show, really great seeing like the N7 and mm -hmm. older Liara. I don't expect to see this game for another eight years, nine years, <laughs> knowing BioWare's <laughs> track record. But in terms of just a trailer, in terms of it being at the Game Awards, I thought that was really cool and yeah. got me excited. And I'll never see it on PlayStation. Like, what's with every game that isn't Halo being so afraid of the number four? Like, <laughs> why is why is God of War four have to be God of War? Why does the right. next Mass Effect have to be? Mass Effect. Just because call it Mass Effect Four. Like because that's once you close is. out a, tri a trilogy, then you're just like, okay, reboot time. Yeah, like yeah. soft yeah. reboot. But isn't it? Isn't it not a reboot? I remember people saying that like it's whatever the trailer is showing you yeah. is a continuation of the events. It is. Of Mass Effect. I, but I just feel like by the time it comes out, it's going to be long enough that they can just be like, okay, it's Mass Effect. It's okay. Same thing with yeah. God of War. Same same yeah. with like all yeah. these other games. Yeah, and it's the it's thing weird. is. For Mass Effect fans, you know, just seeing, like you mentioned, Steve, like just seeing that trailer is kind of solidifying and like kind of making it better for all the bad press that's been around the Mass Effect game. Like just studio yeah. people change, writers just changing, um, people mm. leaving and like yeah. coming in. Like it's, it's been so messy. So at least if, that you're seeing something, it's like, okay, they're moving along. Exactly. You know? And I mean, yeah. obviously, it's not really going to be the same now that Casey Hudson has left the studio again. Uh, I don't really have too much faith in what that game will turn out to be, but I, I, I'm still optimistic knowing that mm. Mass Effect is still going to be around at some point in the future. Yeah, Camille, this is I'm going to I'm going to give you a little uh, a little soapbox here. How do you feel about Black Ops Warzone? Were you excited when you saw that trailer? I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm a Call of Duty fan, so yes, I was excited. <laughs> of course I was excited. Um, it's just, it kind of was lackluster. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted <laughs> to see more. I'm excited for the concept. I'm excited sure. that it's happening. I'm excited we got a glimpse. Um, I want Are you see sure about that? <laughs> I just want, I want more. Like, I want more. There's so much about that freaking update that we just don't know. And it's know. getting it's happening in like two like, days, right? It's the 16th. Yeah, yep. the 16th, mm -hmm. two days. So it's like, yep. we just don't know how it will work. And because I have like two faction of friends, one who are like war zone heavy and like another that's like modern, well, three factions, another that's like modern warfare heavy. Right. And then a third that's like, we bought the newest one and we're playing mm, black ops sure. and yes there's zombies but it's cool but buggy but cool also really buggy um so it's like <laughs> how am i gonna bring my factions of friends together into warzone i need to know because like a lot of them have questions like a lot of them that aren't familiar with black ops are like this is stupid the guns are completely it's so more simplistic blah 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 mm -hmm. and i need it i need con like i need stuff to know to convince them that it's gonna be okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm right there with you. I, I want that validation. I want them to come out yes. and explain like what this game is gonna be because I still don't know like what that means in terms of Warzone. Mm -hmm. Is it gonna run like Warzone currently does or is it gonna run like Black Ops Cold War? I still don't know. What's the scale of this new map? I'm kind of yeah. frustrated not knowing anything about this other than that there's gonna be new skins. Cool, you're gonna take my money. Awesome, Activision, great. Uh, <laughs> but. But in terms of like what I'm playing and like in terms of my group of friends who are like, I don't really know 
like what we're stepping into in two uh, days that's really concerning and i mean yeah. i guess i'm gonna jump in on wednesday and find out but i i wish i knew ahead of time yeah, yeah. we all and the thing yeah. is activision knows that we all wish we knew we yeah. all know we yeah. want to know but we're all gonna spend money we're all gonna be there we're gonna be there mm -hmm. for the long run because <sighs> we simp on call of duty that's it okay? year that's after year yeah year after year we're here all the time. Um, one right. thing with the Game Awards that I really appreciated, and you know, Malik, you touched on, um, and it was the Persona Five mm. performance. Like, mm. I love so much how, because like, I feel like as a gamer, I fall in love with soundtracks. Like growing up, when I hear like Ocarina of Time and like Zelda's yeah. Lullaby, it just takes me back. When I hear like, you know. Um, like any soundtrack from a game that I've spent so much time with, it just takes me back to that. And I love that the Game Awards with their orchestra, with their performances, that they're doing this more and more. And really, and quite frankly, I would have been okay if they just put out all the nominate, like the winners on a website or like they were just quick rapid fire and then the orchestra performed the whole way through. Like there was, I feel like there was a real opportunity for Jeff to have the orchestra more integrated into the show because it's virtual or for a right. longer period that it was missed. And I don't know how much they cost, but he should have put all of his advertising money into that. Get rid of I the mean, lasers on screen and on the stage, just, put it into the orchestra. Put it into the orchestra. Let's make it a four hour show. Orchestra is an hour long, okay? Yeah. Like that I could, people would buy tickets for that virtually. Like, yeah. you know, just to them perform i think was really great um one other thing that i have to say that i kind of hope that the show would have had um but it didn't and this has to go with like all the reveals i was hoping for a reveal of the rumored silent hill game mm. um just because you know it's rumored that hideo kojima uh my right. boy my oh, boo okay, hold on he's involved speaking Don't of Okay. Speaking of the sun, what was that game that they revealed? Returnal. <laughs> Returnal. Yeah. Returnal. Where they started it off with the door. What? Whoever at PlayStation or whoever was involved in, in putting that trailer together yeah. is a monster. They knew exactly what they were doing. They knew what they were doing. They knew what they were doing. Okay. Yeah. I saw that door and as well the dialogue of kind of about like a loop essentially. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. It's I was I was it's right there with PT. you. I thought it was. I thought it was, I was PT. Like, it's happening. And then and then it was. I mean, Returnal looks pretty cool still too. But sure. yeah, it's still Silent Hill. Silent Hill. You know, yeah, Silent Hill. <laughs> yeah. we were actually I, the viewers were snubbed. We didn't see the viewers Silent were snubbed. Hill. <laughs> yeah. I want to give a I want to give a shout out too to Crimson Desert because. I I yeah. put so much time into Black Desert Online. I have a problem with MMOs, all right? Mm. I block I bought Black Desert Online a couple years ago on a sale, and in one week I had put 40 hours into it. The this game looks so amazing for an MMO that relies on combos and almost like a fighting uh game combat style and then to be able to put like magic and swords and all this other stuff if they are making this a single player experience and just the way this thing looks and the way that Black Desert Online has evolved over the years to be able to come out of the gate swinging and you get to ride a dragon I mean come on who right. doesn't want to ride a dragon while exploring are going yeah. off behind you i yeah. mean yeah so good on pearl abyss for uh coming out and making the showing because i think that really uh put them on the map since black desert online is an older game people yeah. were like whoa what is like is this a new skyrim what are we getting and then you know it was announced as crimson desert but uh i'm mm -hmm. excited i'm excited for it yeah uh, um, another one i want to throw out is the uh, the callisto protocol which is like yes. the pseudo um you know reinvention of dead space when i saw that trailer i was oh, i was so going cool. away yeah so good that that looks really cool as well i'm just gonna go quickly to our chat um because they're funny um so <laughs> <laughs> risk rude is uh pulling some jokes uh we've seen mass effect already they say uh let's get a mass effect instead dad jokes right there okay Caboose, you have a you have some competition Right there, I know. You're like, what are they doing? How dare you? <laughs> Here's another one um, from Risk Rude. We need a Call of Duty for the 21st century. Call of Duty World, Priest, World, World Peace. Peace. 
Diplomacy Dip- edition. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's a good one. That's good. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, I'm dying over here. Um and yes, Night Machine 47. There is a Silent Hill being rumored. So, look it up. Look at all the theories. Apparently, they may bring Kojima back. Rumored. Um, so I hope that's true. To- but too. also, like what what Konami has done with with PT still, like the Red. fact that they're not allowing it to be playable on PlayStation Five, makes me not believe those rumors. You know what I mean? I'm trying right to kill it. Yeah. Like, because like why why would you block that? Because PlayStation said, then they come out and PlayStation was like. Uh yeah, like we we were cool with letting you guys bring PT over to the PS5, but essentially, yeah, a certain game company didn't allow it or something like that. Essentially, yeah. yeah. And I I don't know, Konami has a history of just not really caring about their IPs to a certain extent, and I just I just feel like if it was Silent Hills, I would much rather see it go to a different studio mm-hmm. somehow, like mm-hmm. whether it's like a licensed yeah. IP or something like that. I would much rather see it like that. Look, I know um, chat, risk rude, I'm, I'm watching you. You're saying Kojima's overrated. Look, okay? Oh. I understand it. There's lots of fan boys and girls like myself that really love Kojima. And yes, we will talk about it because we've had great experiences with Metal Gear, um, mm-hmm. Silent Hill. He's done an amazing job building those franchises into successful legacy brands. Um, and... Yes, Death Stranding had mixed reviews, but there were still mechanics in there that we don't really see in other games. So if yeah. you want to come at me, okay, I'll like walking. find me on Twitter, okay? And we'll battle it out. Actually, I, I know who this is. This is Tyler. <laughs> I'm going to find you, Tyler. <laughs> this is Tyler. <laughs> and I'm coming for you, okay? Um, all right. Now, I do want to touch on, because, you know, I mentioned before, Tom Holland made an appearance, um, and he spoke about the Nathan Drake the um, Uncharted movie trailer. Charted. I thought we were going to get to Me too. something. I... Was that disappointing? It was just weird. Oh, like they brought him on screen to introduce Nolan North. That that's why that's why I was mostly weirded out by it because it was like then what was the point of him even yeah. showing up or like making an appearance, you yeah. know? Like I'm... like at that at that point all I was expecting maybe is for him considering he was on the set of Spider-Man 3 is that maybe like Tobey Maguire was going to walk behind him or something like that, you know? <laughs> like I'm just I'm just sitting there like okay so you showed up like it was literally Tom Holland being like I play Nathan Drake in the Uncharted movie here's Nathan Drake in the game yeah. okay bye as if the audience didn't know so that weird. like but what it, it was so weird because they had Gal Gadot actually a given award out yeah. right um, That's so expected. why would if you can't show a trailer why not have the man read off the cue card That's what I was thinking. And yeah. he was to could yeah. not afford his time or like, <laughs> that's the only thing I can think of. I hate to say it like that, but it could they only afford like those few minutes? Or maybe, maybe. you know what actually, maybe I think what might have happened and what would make sense mm-hmm. is there was lots of, okay, so with Gal Gadot, there was lots of press going for Wonder Woman right. way before um, you know, heavy lockdown and stuff like that. So they might have mm-hmm. been able to uh get her the card to like read and they kind of knew this award was sure. going out to that person maybe this tom holland thing was very last minute and they're like we still want you here just do something right <laughs> and they're like send nolan north and and have a you know they could have even recorded a back and i don't know there was just more that they could have done there so i was a bit disappointed but it's great to see that the game awards are getting more celebrities involved um and Actually, like, I want to get your take uh, before we go on a quick break on what you guys think of that in terms of, like, how celebrities are making more appearances within, like, ge- the geek community, specifically the Game Awards. I know I, people I, don't like it. Like, people, some people are like, well, shouldn't we get actual people in games to present these awards? Right. Which I do agree with to an extent. But at the same time, you know, having someone as, as like, big as Christopher Nolan or even Tom Holland mm-hmm. or Gal Gadot, like they they have a lot of star power and who knows how many people could be then introduced to just video games if you will um or just the game awards uh if like even if there are people who played games they just had no idea that there was a whole award ceremony at the end of the year for them someone like an appearance from someone like a tom holland or a gal gadot could like bring in 
new people to uh, to this medium. So I I don't think it's a terrible thing, um, but I do agree that there probably should be a little more people that are actually in the industry that are presenting awards. You know, yeah. get get more people like Reggie in there, or, or even Hideo Kojima to come out on stage. You know, like to to present an award or something like that. Like that's that is uh is a little more there's more of a like a lasting impact of those kind of people making appearances at the game awards rather than someone in the film industry who's more uh more far removed you, right. yeah i mean what they had they had brie larson uh i don't remember what she presented uh but she did present an award and she's really she's really deep in in the gaming and the geek yeah. community yeah. but it's like more people like her who were who are full-on like movie stars yeah. but actually right. ingrained and in touch with gaming and and geek and nerd uh culture and like even someone like gary Witta, right who yeah. was a, a major writer on some of the star wars uh most recent star wars films but is also very deeply ingrained in the gaming community like yeah. things like that is what i want to see and i want to see more of these niche communities uh getting recognition through their champions because every niche community has like their champion uh and there are people who are involved like even with sports you could have gotten snoop dogg to yes. present an award sure. like there there are so many uh like just people out there and t-pain yeah, even oh my god yeah. t-pain would have been amazing. yeah i think that they are they're looking for the thumbnail because they're looking for people who are going to fit the thumbnail because Wonder Woman promotion and then Game Awards Gal Gadot. You know, yeah. the Uncharted trailer going to be coming out soon and then they got a Tom Holland thumbnail. Yeah. I, I really want to see a little bit more like time and care put into picking these people. And it's great to see them, like you said, Caboose. It, it does bring more people into the gaming community, but I think gamers at our core, we know when it feels uh, like or not half done, but yeah, inorganic. Yeah. 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 No, I definitely agree with both what both of you guys said. I think that there's a there's a balance in there where you can have a, someone like a Brie Larson who actually you know is ingrained in that in this community, but then you also have people who are clearly just in there because th there was a contract signed and they're reading a cue card, right? Kind of yeah. like Christopher Nolan, for instance, right? Yeah, I'm just oh throwing it God. out there. But then there's there's also kind of like a middle ground where even in uh, Keanu's a little bit, he he was talking about how he's not inherently like a, a gamer or a player or anything, but his involvement in cyberpunk kind of opened his eyes into the yeah. gaming community. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was really great to hear. Uh, so I, I want to see it encouraged. I just, again, I don't want to see it as we've got this high, um, you know, celebrity in here just for the sake of their name. I want to see people who are actually invested in the community come yeah, out and it, celebrate absolutely. games with us. It doesn't even feel so forced. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and that's what's important, right? Like if you're gonna have a celebrity there, I, I even wouldn't stretch having Tom Holland there because he's working on a video yes, game sure. adaptation yeah, or a right. film adaptation of a video game, right? Um, but it has to make sense. I know Ninja Machine said he found or she found that the Cobra Kai actors uh were kind of out of place as well. I and forgot about that one. That, yeah. that was a bit out of place. However, I feel like I'm conflicting because like, I feel like gaming has become so much bigger than just games. Like it is kind of mm -hmm. like geek yeah. central. Now. Like it's, it's a meeting place for all these different streams of geek um, I, that I don't know if like that necessarily should be reflected in the game awards because it's called the game awards, not the geek awards, sure. but mm -hmm. I could understand maybe having some very few appearances by people within the geek culture uh, universe. Yeah, that uh, that makes sense. And I even like because uh, you know you have content creators and esports awards. Put some, bring some of those people. Like bring more of those people in. Bring in more like streamers who are kind of well known, but not a, they're not like a Dr. Lupo or a Tim the Tatman or a Ninja. Like bring those or even bring Ninja in to do some of these because I mean, Fortnite's getting Halo before Xbox is getting Halo. <laughs> like it's uh, yeah. 
it's just like things like that where I think that if they put a little bit more like forethought into how to make these uh, niche communities uh, special, I yeah. think that's where the game awards uh, really starts to thrive. Because everybody views games as uh, as an art medium at this point. It's an entertainment and an art medium. Yeah. Now we need to get people to recognize that there's different niche segments of the gaming community because streamer culture, esports culture, and general gaming culture are all very three different segments of the video game industry uh and, and then i think the next step is recognizing that and promoting each one uh to the fullest yeah and i think a good start a good and easy start to that would be maybe not handing out all the esports categories in the pre-show giving them the stage as well right i don't yeah. know yeah. that's just my opinion <laughs> We all had our chance to voice off on that. But when we come back, we'll continue with our predictions, seeing who won in terms of getting the most predictions and um, just seeing, you know, what's going on in cyberpunk world. So we'll be right back. Please stick with us.